Hello and welcome to the Writing for Screens. Live Ask Me Almost Anything and Writing in Public Project. This is uh, episode number two, um, and I'm just going to get right into it. going to briefly remind you, we're going to be doing this Monday through Friday, unless something comes up and I can't do it, at 3 p.m., Pacific Standard Time, and I would love it if you ask me almost anything. I am here to answer questions about screenwriting, whatever you'd like to ask me. Um, but in the meantime, I am going to be working on uh, our untitled Podcast Killer Project so that you can see the work process of writing a script from nothing to a finished script. Um, hopefully a finished script. See how it goes. Let's get right into it. Um, I had a, a bunch of thoughts at about three in the morning the other night. Um, and that's one of the things that I thought about. I thought, well, I'll only write when I'm, I'm sitting down at three o'clock in the morning, uh, sitting at three in the afternoon. And the truth is, once you're working on a project, stuff just comes to you all sorts of different times a day. Um, one of the, hold on. One of the big things about writing is um, once you are working on a project, you will get stuck when you're writing and then you'll step away, go make a sandwich, take a shower, take a walk, and all of a sudden new stuff will come to you. And once you've got the project set up, you have a, a place for it to go and the ideas start to come to you. So big bit of advice, write it down. The work comes when it has a place to go. So what I did was three o'clock in the morning, I went over to my computer and I typed in these notes, um, just stuff that was on my mind. Uh, I began to think, who are these people? Why are they doing this? I've got these people from all over the world who are going to be uh, hunting killers online uh, in their off hours. And the question is, why? why? Why the hell would they do that? Each one has to have a reason. So I started to build up these characters and um, what I did was I typed this into notes. I put everything down into the notes first, just rough whatever it is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of that and paste it into the overview. So what I get is um, I can then strip this down and work for it. For instance, I've got some character ideas here. Um, so what I'm going to do is take, okay, one of the people should just be doing it because they feel a need, it's essentially a need for justice. One needs to enact justice. Believes that good people getting together can stop bad people. That's, they're, they're doing it, uh, because something in their life is driving them uh, out of a feeling of, of fear or um, outrage at the fact that there are these crimes. So we got that character. Um, and then another one, I want to just, they're doing it uh, as, as we often do things online, just to distract themselves. Um, and then another one, I thought the journal, you know, we've got this character who may be a, a former journalist. And uh, I like the idea that this one joined this group basically in order to analyze and mock them. They were going to write about them. They were studying them journalistically, and then they begin to get involved. So at the moment, that character is the guy. We don't have to give these people names. Um, and I think... So now what we're doing is I'm taking the pieces from the notes and putting them into the characters and themes sections so that slowly but surely this overview gets developed richer and richer. It's like every time you cook a little bit more and it gets a little denser and more textured, you solve problems. And then after a while, you've got the script in your head. Um, so I don't know who these people are yet. I'm just going to take these characters' qualities and put them in here. Put them down here where I won't lose them. Um, now, you know, actually, 
one of the things I got to do, I got to start naming people. Uh, it's it's just good to name them. Once you, you, the names are going to change, I'm going to make this guy Hugo, and the rural or solitary uh, woman who he's going to fall in love with. At least at the moment, I actually might switch this. It might turn out that he's the one who's uh, rural and she's solitary in the city. I don't know yet, but we're going to call her Margot. Hugo and Margot, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> Let's not do that. Um, Margaret, Margaret, there we go. Um, this is the work process. You just think of stuff. And actually what always happens is once you get something that you kind of like, everything starts to come out like that and you have to go, no, 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 that's not a good idea. Um, the killer is actually going to be um, another woman. I'm gonna call her Karen because at the moment she feels like a Karen to me. Um, and uh, the serial killer. I had a thought about the serial killer in the middle of the night, and I'm not sure about this, but one of the things is this serial killer has to be somebody who has not been caught, um, and it's possible that the entire hunt for them is a gigantic mistake. So I was wondering, what if it was the accident killer? Um, serial killer, um, in the idea that the podcaster who gets murdered while hunting this killer um, has found what they believe to be a series of connections um, for what are otherwise unsolved crimes. And I was thinking that maybe if this person is, is just completely lost and sad, the podcaster, the one who's theorizing the serial killer. And so they're finding people who died apparently by accident and believe that um, they were actually targeted by a killer. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get away with this, but it's an interesting idea that they're looking for the accident killer. Um, someone who is killing, um, killing in such a way that they get away with it and only a real true crime hunter can find them which means we take this little hunk here, which is about the original podcaster, we put it under that character. Sort of a sad, desperate nut. Um, a person who, uh, and, and by the way, you know, when you're working, you're real familiar, you're real casual, you call people names, you say this person's a nut. By the time I'm done with that, they will be a deep, rich character. I don't like to write any character who I feel contempt for. I always want to believe that there is some human driving element to every character, even villains, even fools. Um, but uh, there's also an impression that they make, the first impression. And uh, often I will call them by that. It's the loser or the nut, whatever it is. I don't mean to disparage my characters frankly, ever. Um, all right. So, um, uh, the problem then, of course, is that this means the actual, that Karen, in taking on the serial killer's modus operandi in order to um, get this uh, podcast some attention by murdering the podcaster um, has to take on that absurd accident killer modus operandi. Creating accident like death. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to pull that off, honestly, but at the moment, it's an interesting idea. Um, so, uh, it's three o'clock in the morning when I thought, uh, I'm doing this. How is this a comedy? How I, I'm talking about murders here. This is serious, some serious stuff. Um, uh, not that you can't have a, a comedy about serious stuff. Some of the best comedies are. MASH is about war. Um, but I'm going to have to deal with that. It's going to be a theme. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this down to my themes section. Themes, see, that's blank so far. That's a problem. Um, and one of the themes is 
um, the, the desire to do something in a world that has gone crazy because it's, it's a pretty crazy time. And uh, I, I want the people who are um, watching this to have both an escape from that and at the same time a feeling like this is helping with that. Um, and uh, I think every good piece of work, every creative story is in some ways an escape and in some ways a way to engage. I think that's a balance that every creative work has. So, um, you know, we love serial killers. Let's let's talk about that. We love serial killers. Why the fuck do we do that? Um, so that's an important question. Why do we love serial killers? What what is this thing like? Like proportionally, serial killers occupy far more of our creative time, our arts, the the, the entertainment than they actually occupy in our lives. Serial killers are in truth, not that big a problem in life. There are so many more, you know, it's it, drunk driving and uh, the incoming inequality are far bigger killers than serial killers. And yet we just love them. Um, I need to think about why I need to have the characters engage with this. Um, what else have we got here in our pile of notes? Oh, I thought I thought one of the characters should actually be an out and out conspiracy nut, a, a person who is is just that no one would take seriously, and yet um, by the end of our story we recognize that they are beneath their terrible mental mistakes a good person um, because. Uh, because I like that, because I think that, that it's better to not stigmatize and attack. It's better to try and see the humanity in every single type of person. And one of the fun ways to do that in a story like this is to take somebody that you would ordinarily dis dismiss and see them seriously. I don't think that should be the original podcaster. I think the original podcaster should probably uh, be very focused on true crime um, we need a, a loon, a real loon in one of our uh, secondary characters. So I'm going to just say that one of our other detectives is just a loon. And I'm going to take away the question mark because they should, in some ways, become a good person. Okay, what does that leave here? How is this a romantic comedy? Um, Yeah, how is this a romantic comedy? Um, a romantic comedy is going to be about a couple who, um, for some reason, they can't get together or we think they won't get together, um, and they have to work through that obstacle to find love. Um, so work through an obstacle to find love. What? is the obstacle to love. What is the obstacle to love in this story? Um, which is going to bring us back to our main two characters, uh, Hugo and Margaret. Um, and I think very often the best way to develop a story, because it's so enormous. I mean, these are big questions, not just, you know, big philosophically, but big structurally. In other words, we're talking about the main operating principle of this story. Is it, is it about how people can't communicate or about how they're... Um, social setting keeps them apart. Those are very different stories. Um, and yeah, let's, let's take a little break from the, uh, one of the most important things that you need to do as a writer is take your time when you're settling on those big choices. Um, they will eventually become the driving decision maker for every little choice, 
but you also don't want to lock into them too early. Um, I'm not sure yet what this is about. I know that I've got this hook. I think that, that scripts often start with just a, a thing that snags you. Sometimes it's just a twist on somebody else's work. You will see, uh, you know, a type of movie, like, you know, a mystery or a sci-fi movie, and you'll get some idea that for some reason you think, oh, that's a cool twist on that genre or on that story. Um, famously, uh, the movie The Apartment, which is just genius. It's one of the best movies ever made. Um, it was actually motivated by Billy Wilder, the writer-director, seeing another movie called Brief Encounter, which is a great love story from uh, England, uh, very restrained, very uh, modest, uh, about two very ordinary people who almost have an affair and then don't, called Brief Encounter, based on a play by Noel Coward, um, directed by David Lean. Anyway, there is a scene in Brief Encounter when... Uh, the couple decide they're going to go through with the affair and they borrow an apartment from a friend of the man in the apartment, uh, the man in the, the story. Trevor Howard, he's a doctor. He has a friend, another doctor, I think, who says, you know, I'm not going to be at my apartment in the afternoon. Um, if you want it, you can use it. I don't think he volunteers. I think Trevor Howard knows about it and asks about it. Anyway, Billy Wilder said he watched Brief Encounter and he thought, what is it like for that guy who's the minor, minor, minor character, to lend his apartment to a couple having an affair. And that led to the character in uh, C.C. Baxter in the apartment who finds himself lending out his apartment to all the executives of his company in order to get ahead because they're all having affairs with uh, people in the office and they need a place. And that's the, that was the beginning. That was the, the spark, the, the, the seed for the, a brilliant original comedy called The Apartment you got a lot of work yet to do before you're ready to go to writing the apartment from, I wonder what that guy in Brief Encounter is like. Um, but that's where we are. I know that I wanted to work in this world, this, this world of people who are connecting on the internet, solving crimes together. Um, so let's go back to that because I, I seem to have transitioned right into a, whoa, into answering the question, um, which is, um, why are these people hunting killers? Who are these people? Which is going to be a central theme, a central um, issue. It's going to, there's going to be a thematic meaning to that. And I think part of the reason is um, escapism. Okay, some so like the distraction character. And you know what? I think maybe that is, now that I think about it, I think Margaret, I think Margaret is distracting herself from personal unhappiness. Um, I don't, I, I um, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Um, somebody should be out for justice. Somebody should be out for justice. Um, and we know it's not Hugo because he's, frankly, uh, sort of cynical about these people. And Margaret, yeah, I don't think Margaret can be distracting, actually. Um, at first, that was, I mean, that's a good character, but it's bad for the story because then we have two characters who both sort of don't take it seriously. Um, it's better if one doesn't take it seriously and the other does. Um Out for justice. Uh, it doesn't quite ring true for Margaret yet. Sense of puzzling. Um, perhaps Margaret is going to be the big question. I think that Margaret at the moment, I don't know enough about. And I think uh, what you often do in, in this writing game <laughs> is you find yourself with the spot you don't know. You know, like I'm beginning to get a sense of things I do know. And Margaret, she's important and I don't know her yet. So you let that cook. It could take a while. But um, I think the next set of work, 
I'm going to go to the notes again, my notes, and I'm going to set as the last notes that I remember it when I come back and look here is we need to know Margaret. That's the next step. Okay, so I think we'll stop there. Uh, we've done 20 minutes. 20 minutes seems to be the right length for these podcasts. Uh, ha, I'm turning into my characters for these live streams. Um, so I am going to say I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, we're going to work on Margaret tomorrow more, I think, at least if I listen to myself. Uh, I'm going to start to cook. We'll see what comes up tomorrow. In the meantime, if you want to ask me a question, please contact me. It's a, a tab on almost every single page of the writingforscreens.com website. Uh, I would love it if you would contact me and ask me a question. I'll be happy to answer it here. And then in the meantime, see you next session.